Minnesota governor, best-selling author, TV host, Jesse Ventura joins us for the hour, and I'm not going to hog him this time. At the bottom of the hour, in about 25 minutes, we will start going directly to your phone calls. So that is all coming up. Your chance to talk to Jesse Ventura, because a lot of people have been emailing me, calling me, saying, hey, what's his take on Trump? And I'm like, well, we'll, we'll get him on the show. I was out of town for two weeks. And then he went on CNN and basically said he's shaking the entire political process. So uh, now the governor has a chance to uh, really flesh out here uh, his views on Trump. Election 2016, is he going to be jumping in the race? And so much more. Uh, Jesse Ventura, thanks for coming back on. Great to be on, Alex. Yeah, you took you took off for a couple of weeks and a whole lot of stuff went on. <laughs> Uh, you've got the floor because I'm always jumping in asking 50 questions up front. What's on your radar? Then let's get into Trump. Uh, well, I'm just waiting for the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, you know, with my court case. They're due to hear it sometime in September. We've had three extensions, so we should be at the top of the list, I'm hoping. And hopefully we'll get resolved to the court issue of... Uh, of whether uh, these 33 media conglomerates will prevail and take away unjust enrichment, which will allow them to defame people and do it for profit, business, and money, or whether the courts will stand up and say that the First Amendment does not protect wrongdoing, uh, just as it does not protect running into a crowded theater and yelling fire. You know, there are limits to the First Amendment, and I, and I believe strongly that it's not there to protect wrongdoing and make wrongdoing profitable, which is what the mainstream media people want. But other than that, Alex, I'm just uh, biding my time, doing my off-the-grid show and staying up on the issues as best I can and uh, getting ready to uh, head back south of the border, that is, if I don't have to cross a wall to get there. But, Governor, I know Baja's great. You're retired. You've, you've been a... I'm not retired. Well, I mean, retired from politics, but we'd like you to get back into it. The big question people want to ask is, don't go to Mexico. Stay here. Get involved in the election. Even if you don't run, get out there and get involved politically. No, for Alex, no, because it's too early. That's the one big thing they're missing, the point that I'm stating. I'm stating we need to pass a law that doesn't allow elections to happen until the year that they happen. You can't form a committee, you can't raise money, you can't do nothing to get elected until 2016. I mean, this is so absurd. By the time the president takes office in January of 2017, does that mean the run for 2020 will begin? Well, I get your point that it becomes well, a continuous a political money. process. Alex, I understand Alex, that. If I get in the race now, I'm wasting money, I'm wasting time, I'm wasting effort. If I'm going to get in, I'll wait until June, I'll wait till the pikers are gone, you wait till they're down to two people, then you come in. And I agree them. with that statement. You were just talking about going back to Mexico. I am going back to Mexico. I always do in the winter. What do you think? I'm going to sit up here in the snow? <laughs> And what, go ice fishing all winter? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can I'll, just... I'll uh, still be keeping track. Alex, if I win the presidency, I'm liable to move the White House down there for the winter. I was about to say, why don't we just annex uh, Baja? It might not be a bad... Well, because then the taxes would go way up. <laughs> You know, right right now, the taxes down there are wonderful, and uh, their whole taxing system, believe it or not, is better than ours. Uh, down in Mexico, when you pay your property taxes, they're due in March. If you pay them in January, they knock off 20%. If you do them in February, they knock off 10%. I talked and to three at, people, three people wait, today. At age 65, your property taxes are automatically cut in half if you're a Mexican citizen. Well, that's that makes sense. Our taxes are obviously way too high. Right here uh, in in Austin, I talked to systems wrong, Alex. We I know. I talked to three behavior. different people. I talked to three different people today, all of which had their property tax go up more than sixteen percent last year, and the housing market is not growing any more than it was before. It's a total scam. Oh yeah, and and property taxes technically they're only to pay for your services, your roads, your police, and your fire protection. That's what property taxes were designed to pay for. And 
our system is so wrong here. If you buy a home here and fix it up and make it better, they penalize you for good behavior. You pay more. Now, let's get into Trump. I threw that question sure. out. Uh, your breakdown, I mean, I want you to really speak to Donald Trump, this campaign, the Hillary Clinton email scandal, where you think election 2016 is headed right now. Well, first of all, I'm, I don't agree with Donald Trump in a lot of his positions, and that's fine. But what I do agree on is what he's doing. He is shaking the Republican Party to its core. They don't know what to do with him. He can't be bought. He's worth billions of dollars. So they can't, you know, if, if you put Trump in, like I like to say, if you put Donald in the NASCAR suit, the only thing on the front that'll say is Trump. That's right. If you put any other of these characters in a NASCAR suit of who their donors are, they'll be covered with stickers up and down their arms and legs of who owns them. What would you be covered with? Nothing, because I never, I never took any PAC money. I didn't take any special interest money, and I only took fifty and hundred dollar donations from regular people. That's all. I only raised three hundred thousand dollars when I became governor of Minnesota. So your NASCAR would say, "We the people." Probably everybody. <laughs> Everybody that gave 50 bucks, and that ain't going to get you in the door. Well, but let's anyway, keep talking about Trump. Go ahead. That aside, I love that Donald is shaking up the system, and it takes someone like him with the financial wherewithal to be able to do that. Trump can't get bought. They don't know what to do with him. He's leading by double digits right now in the Republican race, and he's doing to the Republicans what Bernie Sanders, the independent, is doing to the Democrats. They're dividing up, and they're, it's a, an amazing thing. It's what they did to the Reform Party, what the Dems and Repubs did to the Reform Party a couple decades ago when Buchanan infiltrated with all of his people and became the nomination for president and then destroyed the party. Well, it's reversed now. The two outsiders have come into the two major parties. They've turned it into turmoil. I love it. And Trump's leading and Bernie's gaining. And it's phenomenal. I, I'd love it if it ended up Trump against Bernie. Wow. You know, it really does stump me to wonder how this will all end up. In your gut, do you think Trump is sincere? Uh, yeah, because he, he's this far into it now. I, cannot, I, I didn't think he'd do it in the first place, but he's been into it now. He's made every mistake you could possibly make, and it hasn't hurt him. And why? Well, Donald's not dumb. Donald and I have been friends now for 20, 25 years. He came to Minnesota to, for a fundraiser for me and all this. And, and Donald learned from what I did. And when you watch him out there, granted, we don't agree. I, I'm totally opposite him on the immigration policy. But we don't agree on everything. But he learned. He's, he's speaking from the heart. He's using nothing scripted. And the people love that. And they're tired of these hand-picked puppets that the Democrats and Republicans put forward every election for the last 40 to 50 years. It doesn't matter if the Dem wins or the Repub wins. They're both paid off by the same people. Donald Trump is not. And, and Donald Trump may have his flaws, but in the big picture, this is the best thing that could have happened to America. We need a revolution and a revolution in our government, and it doesn't have to be violent. It can be done at the ballot box, and Trump and Bernie Sanders are doing that right now. Well, it definitely shows the ultra-massive anger and uh, the political realignment, the break the people are having with the well, system. Alex, look at the last election, the last national election. Only 36% voted, 64% chose not to. That's a huge majority. And if Trump and Sanders tap into that 64%, they win. Because 64 is higher than 36. Well, you are a lot better than Bernie Sanders, and I trust you more than Trump. The reason Trump is having such success is he is exposing that a lot of the illegals that are coming in, just like Americans flee justice to Mexico, folks from Latin America are fleeing justice here. Even CNN admits thousands of Chinese women, sometimes 10,000 a week, come in on a visa for tourism, have their baby, and have it all paid for, and then their kid's a U.S. citizen, 
and Chinese newspapers advertise, come to America, get everything for free. Now, I agree, the immigrants aren't the bad people overall, and there are a lot of good ones, but the people coming here to do that are being leeches, and the politicians that allow those laws to be in place are. And so are you ever going to see the perspective a little more like Trump and I do about the fairness issue well, of these borders? Well, then the first thing that you should do then, Alex, you and Donald should get together and lead the charge to take down the Statue of Liberty. Take it down. Jesse, that's, that's kind of a stunt well, statement. That's what welcomes these people to the country. It says, give us your poor, give us your downtrodden. But they didn't get welfare is. before, and they had to wait at Ellis Island for three months to <laughs> make sure. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Alex. Every immigrant, immigrant group in America has gone through the same thing. Be it the Italians, be it the Irish, whenever it happened, they all went through the same thing. Nobody wanted them here. Everybody wanted them kicked out. Oh, they're coming here. They're taking yeah, all A lot of that's Hollywood exaggerating it. A lot of that's Hollywood exaggerating it. Well, okay, but take down the Statue of Liberty. Take it down. Well, I mean, it is an occult symbol from France. Maybe they should take it back. Well, then then we should take that symbol down. and, and as I think we as should melt it down and sell Alex, the scrap metal Alex, and import Alex, more illegals. Remember this. Remember this, and all your listeners should be wary of this. When you build a wall, first of all... It'll keep you in. Yes. And, and, and if it's 20 feet, I'll find someone with a 21-foot ladder. And are you going to make it the death penalty if somebody... Uh, let's over debate the this when we come back. Kill him? Governor, stay there. We'll be back with Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura is our guest. I agree with about 90% of his political views, but the reason I like him is I know he's not controlled by special interest. I know he's had the government come after him and censor his television program. I know he really cares about this country. And I know that they lied about him with the Chris Kyle book, and then he stood up against it and was victorious, and they're still coming after him. And if people come after me with lies, I'm going to expect my friends to stand up for me because I'm not a fair-weather friend. That said, clearly... There is a globalist industrial plan by the Republican leadership, mainly, and the Democrats, to get cheap labor and to create political balkanization. Clearly, immigrants to this nation, German immigrants, were treated bad by the English immigrants. Because the English immigrants treated those beneath them bad. That's just classism. And the Italians and the Irish and all the rest of it. And, and other immigrant groups, the Chinese, were treated terribly. Probably a million Chinese died building the West. So... I welcome all these hardworking, good people here. The problem is the socialists, the Ford Foundation, admits it as a plan to bring in 50, 60 million illegals from Latin America predominantly, have them basically all vote socialist, vote to take the guns, and it's game over. And you incentivize with paying for the babies, making the kids citizens and all this, it's not fair. I can't go to Mexico, have a baby with my wife, and then we get to stay there and get welfare. Now, that's what I'm saying. I get Ventura likes everybody. I like everybody, too. So this is a short segment, Governor. I've had my two minutes. You've got about three, four minutes to lay out your position on this. But I really think it's well, a cheap shot well, to say, get rid of the Statue of Liberty. Well, to me, to me, get rid of the Statue of Liberty, put up walls, and we shouldn't let Canada be immune. If you're going to wall off Mexico, wall off Canada, too, because actually... Uh, because the 9-11 uh, the hijackers allegedly came down from Canada and harmed us. So let's be fair. Let's put walls on both sides, keep out, and, uh, and uh, we'll end immigration and all that stuff. And, and I hope people are prepared to watch their food quadruple because uh, it's those people that harvest our agriculture. They're our slave labor that we have in the country. And it's going to, and again, I, I'm not uh, 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 I'm not for illegal entry into the country, but the point is, it's the people who have been in charge that have created this problem by the laws that they pass, the programs that are out there. How should a somebody who's not a citizen qualify for a government program? That shouldn't happen. But by the same token, uh, you put up all these walls and stuff. Well, then that can keep you in, too. And uh, do we really want to be the United States of East Berlin and have tanks at the border? And what will happen if you climb over the wall? Is that you get shot? Is that the death penalty? 
Or what will happen if I climb over it to go to Mexico? No, I'm not saying we become Checkpoint Charlie. What I'm saying is when these businesses hire illegals, they get in trouble. Wait, Alex, you said I could talk. Alex, we are behaving right now. If you read history, we're just like 1930s Germany. We're looking to put blame on anyone but ourselves, so the Mexicans are the easy people to blame. We blame them for, oh, they're causing all our welfare, yet what's-his-name Scott Walker just gave the Milwaukee Bucks $250 million of welfare to build a new arena while he took it from the University of Wisconsin-Madison education to do it. So it's perfectly fine for corporate welfare. But getting back to it again, if we're going to be that type of a country where we're going to put walls up and all that stuff, and then we have to be like East Berlin because you're going to have to enforce it and you're going to have to behave as such. And, and we'll tolerate nobody sneaking into the country and nobody sneaking out. Sure. And, and, and Jesse, I am giving you fair time here. In fact, more time than I'm getting to debate this. I just wanted to interject the facts that there's six and a half billion people. Africa's population is going to 1.2 billion in the next decade. Latin America's is going close to a billion. These countries are collapsing. There are hundreds who are drowning a day trying to come in out of Africa into Europe. And the argument is, well, we bombed Gaddafi, so we deserve it. I get that. I was against that war. The whole world's collapsing. Should the United States take a billion people and put them on welfare? No. Absolutely not. I mean, I'm not for these walls and stuff. What do we do? We can't afford to even have our own people. We can't even afford the corporate welfare to build the Bucks a new stadium. I agree. Don't build the new stadiums. Don't have banker bailouts. And don't incentivize the giant third world population coming here. But let's remember something. The majority of the immigrants coming from are not from Mexico now. They're from Central and South America. I know. Where I know. Our war, where our wars have turned them into refugees. And I was against those wars, as are you. Well, let's talk oh, about it more. Exactly. Stay there. Stay there. We'll finish up our discussion on globalism, the borders, the rest of it. Ventura has legitimate points. I understand his points. I have my points, and I want to finish up and then get into Hillary. Does he think it's Nixonian? What should be done to her? I hope he doesn't come back with a Ron Paul type statement because I'm going to plug something here for a moment. Where Ron Paul's like, yeah, she's bad, but so are all of them. I get it. Some of them have got to start getting in trouble. Like Nixon, that scared politicians for a while. I mean, it's getting so obvious, so ridiculous right now. We'll talk to Jesse Ventura, who, by the way, hosts his own popular uh, TV show that I'm a frequent guest on as well, Aura.TV forward slash off the grid, completely uncensored, Facebook.com official Jesse Ventura. Follow him on GovJVentura at Twitter. Follow us at Real Alex Jones as well. Now, continuing here, colloidal silver obviously is Mother Nature's antibiotic antiviral. And governments all over the world are now starting to adopt different silver compounds, you name it, as the antibiotics uh, stop working. And that's in the news today uh, that more and more bugs, as you know, uh, are resistant to or completely immune to antibiotics. I know personally, last winter, not this winter, but last winter, I couldn't get rid of a chest cold. Even took antibiotics, didn't even listen to my own you know, rhetoric about colloidal silver, since I've never been a supplement taker. And I guzzled two bottles over a week and just it knocked it out. I mean, within a day of me drinking a whole bottle, and I'm not saying you should do that, talk to your physician, because it is toxic at those levels, but so are antibiotics. At 30 parts per million, not that toxic from the experts, but just check into it for yourself. Talk to your healthcare provider folks. We have the same type that Whole Foods sells, same major manufacturer. Ours is less. It's just relabeled by us from the factory. Well, we go even down further, 30% off a single bottle, buy two, get two free bottles until the supplies sell out. And I'm doing this because we got another shipment coming in in two and a half, three weeks. I believe it'll sell out before then, but I like to discount stuff. I like to be aggressive in the market. I'm a free market guy. Your purchase helps fund this operation. I want to thank you all for your support. This stuff lasts years. Everybody needs colloidal silver. If I have a cut, whatever, it works better than old-fashioned iodine. But I put our iodine in there as well. So get 30% off a single bottle or buy two, get two free. That obviously is an even bigger deal. And we're not like Walmart or folks that'll or Target that are known to raise prices one week and then lower them and call it a sale. It's always the most competitive prices. Um, so there you go, InfoWarsLife.com. 
Super male vitality is the ultimate natural, healthy uh, stamina, libido, you name it. You've heard the rave reviews. as a 5.0 review uh, at InfoWarsLife.com from third-party power reviews that heavily reviews it and is highly respected. Look into it for yourself. You've heard the callers. It has a 4.8 site-wide, which is unprecedented. No other supplements are known to even have that. A 4.5 is unprecedented with other products on their site. Find out for yourself why these are such amazing products. InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. With all the fluoride, glyphosates, and other chemicals in the water supplies, it's insane not to filter your water with a gravity-fed system that leaves the good minerals in but cuts out the glyphosates, the fluoride, and over 300 other chemicals. Pro Pure G2 blows away the competition. We have side-by-side -side comparisons and videos and taste tests and the lab results from third-party top labs of how good these are. We have the lowest price in the world, one of the biggest manufacturers of gravity-fed filters in the world because I have a special contract to sell it at the lowest price and then have a 10% discount with promo code WATER at checkout. You will not find better for the price, period. Other stuff just cuts out the bad taste or you pay twice as much to get something as good as this system. And we have the full family of systems there at InfoWarsStore.com. All right, here's the toll-free number to talk to Jesse Ventura. Whether you agree with him, disagree, have a question, hate him, love him, He's a big guy. He can take it. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Jesse, you've heard my point. The world's collapsing uh, in the third world. Serious problems. I get the West has helped do that. But still, the very same West that's helped do that is opening up to this, incentivizing it. Uh, I mean, uh, th th there's a headline out today where... Third world leaders say New York is more third world than their countries. Don't you see a problem with unlimited immigration? Yeah, well, here's my trade-off for you, Alex. Here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll state this. Put walls at both of our borders, take down the Statue of Liberty, and say, keep out, we're full. But the trade-off is we have to bring our entire U.S. military home and let them protect our borders. No more bases throughout the world and no more wars throughout the world. Because over 100 years now, we've been fighting wars all over the world. And so if you'll bring the military home, I'll, I'll agree with you. We'll put up two walls. We'll let the military protect the United States of America. But we close all of our bases worldwide. And we use the military, like General Smedley Butler said to protect the United States and only the United States. Fair trade? Jesse Ventura for president. That is an excellent idea. You know I'm a libertarian, and all these wars have been criminal. Uh, 15 years after supposed al-Qaeda attacks, ISIS is worse than ever. I want to talk to you about that briefly. Uh, but absolutely, we, we have no business being an empire. And it sounds like you want us to be Switzerland, where it's very hard to get in. You've got to be skilled. you got to bring something to the table. Uh, and they've got one of the highest standard oh, of living. I, I don't necessarily want that, but that's my trade-off. If you're going to guard the country and we're going to put walls up, then let's do it the right way. Bring our military home. We don't need to be having military throughout the world. Our military should be to protect sure. the United States of America and us alone. I have another plan. How about we get rid of anchor baby status and welfare and corporate welfare and slash it all so there's an incentive for hardworking people to come? A lot of these immigrants are. Well, we could do all that by doing the, the military budget. If you bring them all home, the defense budget will get lopped in half. If the only thing we got to protect is the United States, we're going to have more money than we'll ever sure. know what to do with. Because sure. right now, we've lost over $1.7 trillion dollars over there in the Middle East. Lost, gone. 1.7 trillion. Absolutely. Lost. Listen, you're preaching to the choir Lost here, but down the toilet. But it makes perfect sense. What I'm saying is you can't have all this welfare to incentivize lazy people, whether it's from Europe or Latin America or wherever, to just come here and have their babies for free and be able to stay. That's not fair. Certainly it's not fair. Just as corporate welfare is not fair either. I want to get rid of it. And so, we'll, no, and that's fine. We'll get rid of all that. You could get rid of all that. You wouldn't even have to get rid of it if you cut the defense budget in half. I you want to get rid of the welfare. Rid of I want to get rid of the welfare because it ruins people.
Jesse, well, let me guess. I bet you've never been on welfare. Uh, I have not, but, but my wife has. Well, welfare is supposed to be there for six months or something when you're in an emergency. Well, no, my wife came from a broken family, a mother and four children, and they're embarrassed about it, but they were forced to uh, to take welfare at one point in their lives. Well, that's different. So I know what it's like, and I know that it's a safety net that's out there, and, uh, you know, we certainly can remove it. But then again, if we're going to remove that safety net, then we have to have stronger abortion policies. Because if you're going to bring all these unwanted kids into the world, you better have something for them. You know, the thing I love about the Repubs, they care more about people who aren't even here yet than they do the people who are. Well, look, I mean, I get the point that you can't have this welfare state. And then it's basically aborting these people anyways. They're just dumbed down. Well, that's the point. If we're going to bring all these babies into the world... And many of them are unwanted. Many of them are poor. Many of them are this and that. And then you abandon them and say, hey, you're on your own now. You got born, but you're on your own. No, but that's a government policy of putting women on welfare and saying a man can't be in the house to create giant broken systems to be Democratic voters that created that. Well, whatever it is, if you're going to if you're going to be tough on abortion, then you also have to be. Uh, have a decent safety look net. look look i get people that that, that don't want to have another kid and, and so i don't judge them but the abortion system itself was run by margaret sanger they're selling body parts they're lying about it that's my concern is the people running it are very evil well you know then maybe you better get in there and straighten it out well i'm trying uh, hillary okay. do, do you, you think know, we the point is like I said, I think it's very evil to take away the system, the, the safety net, and then force, uh, you know, like Scott Walker, he want, he doesn't even want, you can't get an abortion through incest or rape either. Can, well, can't so we at least ban partial birth? If a victim of incest or rape, according to Scott Walker, that, that woman has to take that child and bear it. Yeah, well, I think arguments like that helps keep uh, it legal. Uh, because it's, it does sound extreme from the perspective of those that are for it. But what about partial birth? An eight-month-old baby could be uh, cesarean and live. Why sell its body parts? Well, I don't, I'm not an expert on that, Alex. I don't know nothing about that. I, I don't either. You're asking somebody that's never looked into it, and I'm not going to comment on no, it. No, I hear you. I, I, I don't know anything about that. I hear you. All I know is that it ain't the government's job to, 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 to in my opinion, to tell a woman what to do with her. Well, body. I think this is good radio. I didn't mean to get in arguments all day with you, but it's important to flesh this out. And, sure. and, and I understand and you I'm believe in your stance. I'm a believer that I don't want... You talk about independence. You want government in your sexual activities? I don't. Hey, you're for uh, decriminalization of prostitution. I agree with you, and now Amnesty International agrees. Studies show it lowers the crime rate and the abuse of women. Absolutely. I say take pimps and government pimps completely out of it. Well, the only reason it's illegal is because there's an exchange of money. And government wants us cut. Sexual acts between two consenting adults are all legal. The only thing that makes prostitution illegal is you have an exchange of money. That's the only thing about it that makes it illegal. Well, I appreciate the fact you're not a hypocrite because I don't know the details, but I would imagine being in the Navy, you're not a spring chicken when it comes to <laughs> a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go to callers, Alex. You I, promised that I'd have callers. I want to do it, but you promised you'd talk about Hillary. I mean, I've been wanting to know, do you think we're about to see the fall of Hillary? Uh, I, I think there's a backlash against Hillary. I get a laugh, though, about her emails and all that stuff, how everyone's up in arms over her emails. I would much rather have an investigation of the trumped-up Iraq war. I agree. And how we were lied to and all the millions of people, hundreds of thousands who were killed because of it, and the mess we're in today. You notice nobody, or I would prefer them to investigate us torturing people. See, to me, those are investigations that should happen. Hillary's emails, I could give a damn less about them. Uh, yeah. Well, what about, what about the fact that we see Jeb Bush coming out endorsing torture last week? Did you see that? Yeah, I can't believe it. You know, to me, here you've got a presidential candidate that wants to be a war criminal? <laughs> I mean, that's what he's saying, because if you endorse torture, that is a war crime. His brother and Dick Cheney are war criminals.
Well, I love how he blames the Democrats who've been accomplices after the fact, like they know about the crime and have helped go along with it, but they didn't execute the crime. And then Jeb Bush last week blamed the Democrats for Iraq when it's Saudi Arabia and ISIS that's running havoc right now that the Bushes are completely allied with. Exactly. It's, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. And I hope the people of this country wake up and see the facts you've just talked about, Alex. It's, a, it's for Jeb Bush to say torturing's okay. We want a president who's a war criminal. And, and you know, but it doesn't surprise me because 90% of these elected bozos were never in the military. And the thing is, if we're going to torture, then we shouldn't complain if other countries torture us. Now, if you get Jeb Bush or Hillary, I might actually join you in Baja. <laughs> I That's who you're going to get, baby. Oh, man, I tell you. That's who you're going to get, because on the Democratic side, even no matter what Bernie Sanders does, they've got these superdelegates, and superdelegates carry the field. So no matter, Hillary's going to get it, because she's got the superdelegates, no matter what Sanders does. And on the other side, they're going to get rid of Trump, because they're going to say he can't beat Hillary. We've got to have someone who can and so it probably will end up, I think, Jeb Bush and Hillary. I don't know who's worse of those two. I, maybe Hillary because she does that Joker face. She's just, I detest her. And it's not because she's a woman like Bernie Sanders says. It's just I'm sick of her. I mean, I'm sick. Well, you know, maybe maybe Jeb Bush because then then we could cancel the Revolutionary War and we could say that we too have a king. King Bush. Absolutely. Uh, it'll you know, be King I mean, Bush the third. How many more Bushes are we going to get then? Are we going to get Jenna? And the daughters, do they come after Jeb? When do we start calling them queens and kings? Exactly. I, and see, that's we're getting back to Trump and Sanders. That's why I'm so happy to see both of them on the scene. Because it's disrupting. They've had it cushy now for 50 years. The only person that caused them some trouble was Ross Perot. And they got rid of Ross real quick when they wouldn't let him debate in 96. They did. That, that ended Perot. But anyway, do you worry about, about them going after Trump? Because Perot said he was threatened by the Bushes, and I believe it. Said his daughters were threatened. I mean, they're not up, they're not above doing that. Well, it, you know, that was one of the reasons I came out and said that Trump needs to take me as a running mate for his own insurance. Because then, if they kill him, they're left with me, and I'm worse. That's a good idea. So you would run as Donald Trump's running mate. Well, I'd, consider, I'd absolutely consider it. If he asked me and he got the nomination, I would give it. Donald's been a friend for 25 years. I owe him that much respect to at least consider it. So you think he's for real running for president? I don't think. Yeah, I think he is. I, think, I, I don't think he would have did and taken all the grief he's taken if he wasn't serious about it. If, if, he, if he's not serious about it, well, then he's got the most... Wild sense of humor I've ever seen. Jesse Ventura, <laughs> key info here. Wow, he would run with Donald Trump. That's a newsmaking statement. All right, well, we're going to. No, and, and Donald may not want me. The Republicans certainly wouldn't want me. I'm pro choice, you know. But if Donald's going to tear things up and get everyone ticked, who would be a better choice than me? You'd be a great choice, and you certainly have integrity. Even if folks disagree with some of your policies, they know where you stand, and that's a valuable commodity. Well, and, and that's what a VP is for. A VP is there to give the president advice. Whether the president takes it or not is up to the president. But and to be a designate backup. thinking, you've got to be an honest VP. Well, you can't he, just go along and get along. You would definitely get a lot of independents and, and, and Democrats to vote for Trump and moderate his ticket. It's, it's, it's a very... Very interesting idea. Uh, let's go to some phone calls. We're going to skip this network break because I'm going to them late. Sean, Tom, Peter, Kenny, and Brandon, I'll be able to get to you. Others will have to get to in the next hour. Dr. Alveda King is going to be joining us to talk about Black Lives Matter. Uh, Sean in Florida, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Alex, you're a patriot as well as Mr. or I should say Governor Ventura. Wanted to ask both of you what your uh, current opinion is on the email scandal. Now, I know Jesse touched upon it briefly just a few minutes ago, but I've got a good feeling that his point of view is going to change if the topic of Benghazi comes up on those emails, which is uh, should be really the That's right. The, the ordered stand-down so the Navy SEALs got killed. We know she's been caught lying. 
uh, that's the whole issue is, you know, Al Capone got it for, for income tax evasion, not for his big crimes. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to Hillary? I, I don't know what will happen to Hillary, but like I've said before, if they truly want to investigate some stuff, investigate the Trump up to the Iraq war and investigate the torture. And to me, those are both higher than anything in Benghazi. Yes, Benghazi was a tragedy. A handful of people died. How many people have died as a result of our invasion of Iraq who had nothing to do with 9-11? Thank you, Sean. A good question. But, but Jesse, I mean, I agree with you. But anything we can burn these criminal uh, politicians with, it'll scare the other ones for some of them to start getting in trouble or stepping down like Nixon. So I don't care who they are, if it's John Boehner or Hillary Clinton or any of them, I want to see them get in trouble. And she is obstructing justice, wiping the emails. She has been caught covering up Benghazi. She's up there making jokes about it. I mean, I would like to see her fall. And then there wouldn't be this Teflon image for all these crooks in government. Well, that's true, Alex. But I would like to see a few others fall first who did much, much more heinous things. Yeah, we know 9-11 is an inside job. And we're trying to get the 28 pages out. But in, and as soon as we can prove who actually yeah. did it, how how about that? I think that's way more important to learn about the redacted pages of the nine eleven report. I agree. I had the congressman on last week trying to get them out. Yeah, I mean, to me, there should be an outcry for that. You notice there's no outcry for that, is there? No. You don't hear any outcry. All you hear is we want Hillary's emails. I want to see the 28 or whatever it is redacted pages of the 9-11 report. Well, I've talked to uh, the, the, the congressman and the senator uh, that have seen it, and it says Saudi Arabia ran the attacks, NORAD was ordered to stand down. It, it, it would send, Cheney clearly was in control, it would send him to prison. Uh, let's talk to Tom in Maryland. Tom, you're on the air. Go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Mr. Jones, I'll tell you the past two days have been... Uh, quite a show. I'll tell you, uh, you have come across as quite the calm, cool, collected, level-headed, and professional orator and moderator. And that's unusual. <laughs> well, I'm getting old and I'm, I got three kids and I'm burnt out. <laughs> Governor, I wanted to Alex, ask you. destroying your image. <laughs> the truth is, I'm just so tired now, I, at least I let folks talk a little. So. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Governor, I wanted to ask you, or uh, sure. at least point out, as a former uh, investigator for the government, uh, a lot of times our biggest cases would come from small leads. And I agree with Alex. I think that these emails could be nothing. Uh, they could turn up something. They could turn up a lot. They could turn up just enough to roll somebody so we could move on to someone else. That's where we make the big cases. So I, I just wanted to point that out. My question for you, though, was about the economy. As a former investigator, I can't believe the incompetence in, in higher office. Uh, for example, uh, when I worked for government, uh, General uh, David Walker was a comptroller. And I thought he was a real hero. He put out a film about the economy until uh, not too long ago. I saw him deny uh, the uh, CAF or the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report that the government puts out. Uh, he eventually had to uh, retract and say, yeah, there is that, but it's separate from the budget. It's not. It's and, really and, and, and what is your question? Is Ventura aware of the separate slush funds in corporate investments that governments keep that's off budget. Oh, wow. You're right on target, Alex. Yes, right, we got to jump, Tom. Leave. You're a great caller, but I got a bunch of them for Ventura. Uh, if you want to stay on hold, I'll come back to you after Ventura leaves. Je in fact, you know, he's gone. Uh, Jesse, what's your take on slush funds? Well, I, I've never, uh, you know, I actually ran into slush funds when I was mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. That's how low slush, how how deep slush funds can go in government. Brooklyn Park, Minnesota had slush funds that were worth more than five annual budgets. Wow. I mean, you know, and this is just a, 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 the sixth largest city in Minnesota. And they had slush funds that they could have ran the city for five years and the people wouldn't have to pay any city taxes for those whole five years. Yeah, we get technical and use the term like comprehensive annual financial report, but they're just slush funds. Yeah, that's all. It's them. 
the problem is this. The people that get elected in office, somehow they think that their job is to have the city have more money when they leave than oh, when yeah. they got there. Oh, Austin's got like $5 billion in slush funds, they admit, and they just yeah. keep raising the property taxes. And yet they'll cry poor mouth and they'll raise everybody's taxes. Oh, and there's plenty of potholes. Yep. Well, so of course... I'm well aware. It goes all the way down to city levels, these slush funds. And what it takes is electing honest people, which means if you elect Democrats and Republicans who already participate in a barbaric bribery system to begin with, you're not getting honest people. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Adrian in Missouri. He's bringing up an exciting topic. We're going to have these folks on on Monday. Uh, the Oath Keepers are, are, are actually doing armed marches with the black folks in Ferguson to bring law and order. The media claim they were racist, uh, but I've not found Oath Keepers to be racist. I found them to be great people. What do you make of black folks now arming themselves in Missouri to stop looting, Jesse? Well, it's going to be interesting. I laughed when I saw the Oath Keepers, and I thought, gee, can you imagine the response if they were all black carrying automatic assault weapons? Holy cripe, the National Guard would have been out there, and they'd have put... <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm not ready for armed rebellion yet, Alex. Well, I'm not calling I'm not for that. I'm not ready for the people to pick up arms. We have an alternative called voting. You can get these people out of office, and you can cause a revolution sure. without having to shoot each other. Let's get Adrian's I'm not take. not ready to go to that point yet. Well, I mean, to be specific, though, we're not saying armed rebellion. We're saying openly exercise our Second Amendment so folks know we have a right to open carry. Well, yeah, but they, they also could lead to some type of interference during a problem, too, and then what will happen? Well, they're going to march with 50 armed black folks next week. Well, and, let's see what happens. And their point is, don't be racist. Black folks have a right to march armed as well. I'm almost Absolutely. scared. Absolutely. We all, we all do because of the Second Amendment. I agree. But 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 the point is, that the, the, the black people are scared, saying if we march, the cops might do something. Uh, so we'll and see. they have reason to feel that way, don't you think? I think so. That's why this is I so... Do. That's why this I, is, I would I would think they have decent reason to feel that way. I hear you, Governor Adrian. Real quick, what's your point on that? Yes, um, I was down here on the ground with Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs while they was here, and um, I'm I'm here. I'm part of an organization here where I'm trying to educate. The Adrian, African this is too community. important. Don't hang up. I'm gonna. Jesse's got to go. I'm gonna come back and let you talk about this and get your take as somebody that lives there. Jesse Ventura, I hope you come back with us in two weeks again. Thank you so much. And, Absolutely, uh, Alex. Look forward to doing it, and hopefully, I'll, I'll get resolved in my court case, and I'll be able to talk freely. Bye bye. Thank All right, you take care. There goes Jesse Ventura. Third hour coming up. Adrian, I'm gonna Thank give you the floor when we come back.